what's up guys i'm super excited because it's officially the second episode of hello braga and i'm so excited because i have an amazing actress tv host and media personality as well as businesswoman in tanda duma oh my girl okay hi, hi. <laughs> thank you so much for joining this is the me second episode yes with me yes that's insane i like yeah. special people that are close to me and you're very close to me we are close we are close i love you I love and that's why i'm here thank you i know you don't like thank doing you. interviews but i promise i'm gonna try and make you feel as comfortable as possible <laughs> i'm okay with that can, can i do an eat? icebreaker yes so please tell me about this time where your grandmother beat you because she sent you to go get beer and you came back with a burnt two-year <laughs> bottle <laughs> From the trash, wait, 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 not wait, wait. from the trash. Okay, you guys do research here. Oh. Hey, okay, this is I a great show. Tell me. Okay, oh my goodness, <laughs> I was a very silly child, very naughty okay. growing up, and I really just took my grandmother <laughs> as a little Popeye. Really? Every chance I could get, I'd just like you know prank her, and it was really just a prank, and it turned out to be something you know, yeah, it turned out. Yeah, but a burnt bottle from the trash can. That was the alternative. Uh, yeah, I mean, we really just, this was not even the first prank we had done. Oh, was it a prank? Yeah, it was a prank. It oh. wasn't like a, you know, it was really a prank. And yeah, that one, it, it really took her off. And oh my gosh. Yeah, but we're just kids. We're just yeah. naughty. We're just, you know, having fun, which, yeah. She did not receive yeah. very well. Yeah. Did you go get the beer after she beat you? Well, no. <laughs> I thought maybe use the money to get lollies or something. Uh, no, um, no, no. <laughs> yeah, just no. Okay, tell me about this boyfriend of yours that looks like a Suzuki. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Why are you making me laugh so much? Why is this uh, not a Suzuki? Uh, but there's nothing wrong with a Suzuki though. A, a human being looking like a Suzuki. <laughs> not a, like the car. <laughs> Can I tell you, actually, there's this funny thing that we do at home. Like, we just, like, match people with cars. Like, I can tell you how you look like. My sister would actually say, actually, I agree. Not a uh, car. I promise you, it's a thing at home. Like, it's a thing. And that's how we actually get to name people. If we, we you know, gossiping, like, oh, now it's Suzuki. Oh, here's BMW. Oh, here's X6. You and know? they actually look like, like the car. Yes. So if it's a heavy, big body, it's have on the city's burns. Listen, have you never, like, seen someone who actually looks like a car? I understand people looking like they're dogs, like they're pets. They end up looking the same. Or like you and your boyfriend end up looking alike and talking alike, but no, not a car, sis. I promise you. Like, I really need to... Okay, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a thing. And he looked like Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> is this boyfriend a recent boyfriend? Or is it a boyfriend from high school? Oh, no, it's an ex. It's a, like a... Yeah, it's an ex. Now I'm going to look at every guy you're with and be like, does he look like a Suzuki? Because <laughs> maybe y'all date him because he looks like a Suzuki. Yeah. Not even, not even. That's an old, that's an old boyfriend. Oh. And there's nothing wrong with the Suzuki. And he looked good, actually. Did he? Yeah, he did. Oh, I, I don't date shady guys. You don't date shady guys. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, with Saba Manzi. Oh, my God. Which means you don't like Parfi. What? What's this? What you don't like me to Parf? Nadia, do you hate me this much? I don't like me like that. I'm just like, what's happening? I actually don't. And I, I actually think, I, oh, I'm lying. I bathed today. Ah, uh, you talking about when you're a kid. I actually don't. It's, I feel like it's a lot of admin, man. Like, no. we have to, like, get in the shower. Put, oh, well, firstly, if it's a bath in the bathtub. Yeah. We have to put in the water. Uh, the, that thing. That thing. The yeah, bubble bath. The bubble bath. Yeah. And Shower's then, easy. I get it, you. I agree with you. Yeah, but also, shower is... It's a lot. Just water is a lot. But I, Girl, I, I do bath because it's necessary. It's necessary. For me to do it. But okay. if it wasn't really, miss me. Cut me out. Proudly <laughs> so. I'm saying this with so much, pride. so much pride. Thank you. I love it for you, though. It's fine. You love it for me because that means you're actually chilling at home most of the time. You're actually just chilling. I am. Actually, I get it. I'm a homebody, actually. No, I get it because if I'm chilling at home, I, I'm not gonna. If I'm not gonna, I've got nothing to do. I'm not bathing. Yeah, I'm not gonna bath. I'm gonna well, bath. I have to do something before I sleep. Sharp, but I it's mean, it's one of those things that I actually don't take serious. <laughs> bathing for what? <laughs> Why? Yeah. I bath because it's necessary, really. Um. Okay. Well, let's just lighten up the mood. I'd like to talk about your career. And how you started. Yeah. Tell me the significance of the 8th of November 2008. Hectic. I'm going to have to give a big props to the research team here. <laughs> what the hell? You guys are actually <laughs> you know, What? Mm. Wow. That day, 8th of November 2008, I was in grade 8. I was 13. I was 12. Mm. And I went to my first ever audition, yeah. which was on... 
Yo TV, was a Yo TV Maggot to Me Middle audition. Mm. Uh, I was, I'm from a very poverty stricken environment, you know. Orange Farm. Yes. yes. Okay. I was born in Soweto, but I grew up in Orange Farm. Okay. Yeah, so it was quite a, a hectic and a challenging one there because number one, I couldn't speak English. I, even now I'm trying, Sham, I'm trying. Ah, yeah, English is English, it's English in uh, uh, English is a lot also. If I'm not a um, I, I, I really was the only person who actually believed in what I wanted to do at the time because uh. my mom was just like, do what you want to do, but mm. like, sing in happy, you know, mm. um, and I had to literally steal my mom's phone. I remember actually the day before to register for the auditions. I went to the auditions. My mom took me there. She didn't have a choice. Mm. Um, my sisters were there, always been so supportive. Uh, had my first audition at Maponya Mall. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. It and it's like an embedded in your memory moment. Yeah, forever, actually. Uh, wow, you guys took me there? Yeah. Hectic. I think those moments are extremely important, especially when you've become so successful, to remember those moments. And 100%. if you had to have a conversation with that girl that was in that line for your TV in Maponya Mall, what would you want to say to her? Because I'm sure she was nervous as hell and she didn't think. You know, you're gonna be you. I, I know. Oh, just just go for it. Just go for it. Go for it. I went for it. Hey, like yeah. even regardless of what was happening around me, the situation, the upbringing, the background, it really didn't matter. I really wanted what I wanted, and I went for it. So, what signs did you have when you were younger that you knew that the entertainment industry is what you wanted to do? What made you get up and go to that line in that audition? <laughs> it was just the passion. I won't even lie to you. I, I'm not gonna say I was that girl who would only shine amongst everyone. I was that, but that was not the main reason. I just knew from the beginning, I would watch TV and I would imagine myself on TV. Yeah. And I said, I think I like this. And I tried it out 2008 on the 8th of November. Mm. And look at me now. That's such a monumental day. I know. I love it. <laughs> you're extremely confident. I feel like every time that I see anything that you're doing on social media, anytime you're on your lives, anytime I meet you, you are a very confident person. But how did you find that confidence? Because I heard that um, when you were a kid, you got teased for your freckles. 100%. My grandmother. <laughs> your grandmother teased yeah, you? Not even someone outside. That's your father. grandmother. No, no, that girl hated me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think about it now, even now, actually, I'm not comfortable with, yeah. you know, well, if I had to choose having to walk around barefaced and, or with makeup, I would obviously choose without makeup because I really just hate makeup. Yeah. I had to, like, you know, meet the standard today because look at you, ma'am. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. But I really still have insecurities with my freckles because of that one particular thing that my grandmother had said to me. It really crushed me. I don't want to say it. I want you to say it because I know what your grandmother said. Um, yeah, she said that. Okay, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but was she joking? And you know, actually, like black tax and black, like, like family sometimes are the no. ones that break you the most. Well, yeah. Well, my grandmother's kind of wild. Like, really? she actually doesn't even care what she says. You know, she does not mind for what she says and how she says it. Yeah. And for her, I think it was a thing of, I'm just reprimanding. And maybe if I say it this way, she will get to listen to what I say. But mm. it was actually something that was the opposite. You know, it damaged me. Yeah. Um, I'm okay now. You yeah. know, I, I'm okay. But I still am insecure with my freckles. Your freckles always, are so beautiful, though. Thank you. <laughs> oh, they really I'm are. only hearing all these things now. Oh. You know, oh, you're so beautiful. All of your freckles are like, love mm. them. That is actually hectic because I grew up knowing that they are actually the most disgusting thing. Oh, no. You know, um, yeah, she said, yeah, I, yeah, she's wild. That's we don't have to say it. Yeah. We don't have to say it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. So when those things happen to you and you are oh, like your confidence now, you have to like rebuild it yourself. Who would you say were your style icons and who would you say were the people that influenced you? into wanting to do what you do because you do multiple things you can you can host you can act you can present so you are like a triple thread you are a triple thread so who are the people you looked up to and who you look up to now uh whoa um i don't know you don't know <laughs> it's funny to say you look up to yourself yeah, well, i actually do like i really draw a lot of motivation from myself and the strength and the independence that i carry and the confidence you know mm. i always want to see myself greater and doing greater and doing better mm. so i always push for that um i'd say when i was younger i think if it was actually, <laughs> it was actually me you yeah me 
I, I like that. Yeah. I like that because I also feel like you're very in touch with your femininity and your sexuality. And like when I see you on the red carpet, babes, you don't shy away. We bring you a little bit of a side boob. Even today, we've got a side hip. I'm sorry, y'all can't see it. <laughs> and I'm looking at the shoes and the swag is just amazingly dope. So Thank for you. you, you don't get restricted by any like social constructs and stuff like that. And where do you think that stems from? Imagine being told by someone you don't even know Imagine. how to look like, how to dress, how to behave, how to speak. How exactly. To Imagine. Imagine that. Yeah, it never really worked for me. I think at home, um, well, I grew up with my mom and my grandmother. My grandmother was the toxic one. Shem. Mm. It, it, it's straight. It, it's like that. Was the toxic one. Uh, my mom would actually encourage us in a way to, you know, behave a certain way, do things in a certain way. And I think I'd, I'd like to believe that I actually took that from her, the confidence yeah. and also never having to care what the next person says. So I want to go into your upbringing. Yeah. So I know your upbringing, as I'm hearing now, that it wasn't the easiest. Yeah. You grew up obviously with your grandmother and your mother and your four sisters. Yeah. I want to know what, what entailed the typical day for you while you were growing up? Like, what did that mean? Like, what was happening? What did you do when you woke up? Oh my God, um, we're uh, actually such a very tight family, mm. you know. I think it's because of also all the things that we went through. Grew up without a dad. Mm. Uh, my dad was the most horrible person in the world. Um, we'll get to that, don't unpack that yeah. yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I've always been so driven. I don't know, I would actually say because of the situation we were in at the mm. time you know i really didn't like how we lived yeah. it was just so hard like we really just needed to make means every day just to make sure that the next day we we're okay and yeah. i didn't really like that for myself and for my family as well yeah. so it was a I, i've always been so artistic actually mm. so i do like very, things that motivate me and encourage me to like you know, pursue the, the stuff that I really am passionate about, which is art and film and, you know, entertainment. Mm. So I, I, I do, I used to be part of a choir. Really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I used to, and I used to do like a lot of debates at school, mm. a lot of poetry, um, public speaking. Okay. I was that girl. I hated having to jump around the netball court. No. I, I never did that. Yeah, she looks like a netball handle. Uh, I'm not going to lie. What? Uh, never. Oh, I'm actually very lazy. I even hate walking. Like, uh, uh, I d yeah, no, it's bad. <laughs> it's actually really bad. But I was that girl. Like, I would go for things that make me happy. So yeah. when I was at school, uh, I absolutely loved having to, like, interact with people. Mm. Uh, yeah, also, I was a very smart, you, are clever. you know, very clever, you know. Uh, so I was very in, I really loved education, loved books, you know, yeah. poetry, public speaking, anything that made me happy at the time, I would go for it. Yeah. I like that. So I feel like there's a very big female energy of how you grew up, and especially now that you have a daughter as well. Yeah. Do you feel the fact that you grew up with so many women around you, it shaped who you are today? 100%. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I... My mom, I have to give my mom like big credits, mm. you know, um, she, she didn't have much, but she did so much, mm. you know, um, she taught me independence. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very big on independence mm. and even having issues with boyfriends because <laughs> me, I want to do everything by myself. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, and I appreciate that, you know, yeah. um, also love as well. We grew up to be such a very tight, as I said earlier, with my sisters, we're very close. We love each other. We support each other. We take care of each other, mm. you know, uh, also there's just so many dynamics around, but I'd say one big thing is definitely uh, independence. Yeah. Yeah. Being self-reliant. Yeah. Being strong for yourself. 100%. I love that because in this day and age, we need it because the boys out here are trash. Ooh, trash. Very, okay, we don't share to It's a dee dee dee. I'm here, it's a dee dee dee. And I'm not even dee dee dee. Y'all are dee dee dees. <laughs> so I know you and your family um, moved to Orange Farm after there was an incident where your father burnt down your house. Yes. Tell me about that experience and do you still remember it? I How do. How old were you? I was three years old. Oh my gosh. I was three. My dad was a heavy drinker. Yeah. Uh, probably the main reason why I don't drink alcohol. Oh, that's good. I love a few because, yeah. wow. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> I love it. Um, 
he was a very big drinker and he was actually well apparently i don't even remember like great moments with him you know mm. he was apparently a great man but when he would just drink it's a different person is a different person mm. so <clears throat> i remember i was three years old we were sleeping he would come back very late mm. uh, from the tavern mm. and that day i really don't know what demons were in him mm -hmm. and instead of just knocking he literally just bent down the whole shack with you guys in it inside yeah it was my mom and my three sisters so four, five of us in the house uh in that little shack and in the middle of the he night so you're sleeping I'm yeah guessing. we could like smell the smoke i can't remember properly but i know the story because it, it actually is still playing out in my mm -hmm. head now um he burnt us down i remember he actually broke the window burnt the curtains and Fine. yeah he set the whole shack on fire and we luckily we had like two windows and my mom had to throw all of us by the window, all of us and, and we had to help her out as well so that's how we actually survived um, no, that just gave me goosebumps that is the scary yeah thing. i'm so glad actually you know i used to cry a lot about this mm. i mean it's traumatic yeah uh, but i'm okay with it i've made peace yeah um i'm okay yeah yeah it that's happened for a reason yeah that's good that you say that you're okay because i actually wanted to find out now that he's passed like what are your feelings towards him do you forgive do you still have resentment do you still have anger towards him i actually don't yeah. i actually don't i've forgiven because i even had to like put like a young tombstone for him mm. you know just to say you know what thank you actually for bringing me to life mm. i am as great as i am because of you today if you mm. weren't out there um, I probably wouldn't be as amazing Driven. as I am. Mm. Uh, I'm thankful for that, but otherwise, trash, trash, trash. Trash, dee dee dee. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving dee dee dee. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've forgiven peace with it i'm okay with, with with how things actually turn out yeah you know because i got to understand that things happen for a reason in life and you know what that thing made me stronger yeah. i'm okay i'm happy that you're okay yeah i'm okay so the relationship or the experience that you experienced with your father do you think that affects how you deal with men today in the beginning yes mm. um yeah i'd have like a different Man, why mm. are we talking about men? Ah, we have to, babes, because why? Boring. What can we do? <laughs> <laughs> People want to know because you have property. I'm sure your DMs are wilding. Definitely. Stop it, Nadia. Definitely. Like, you, like a lot of people's questions. I know people, and I can't even tell you right now. Oh, I know. wow, that is hectic. For real. Like, <laughs> but For in real. the beginning, definitely. But now, honestly, I, I look at life differently. You oh. know, I look at life and also give chances to people to showcase themselves who they really are. I can't judge, I can't judge a bunch of men because of one man that did terribly yeah. bad decisions, you know. So in the beginning, it was really hard. And... Now I'm okay. Now you're okay. I'm okay. Are you single? I still don't like men. Yeah, don't kiss boys. Yeah, Once don't. you kiss boys, everything goes south. Yeah. Like, just don't kiss them. And you see, I kissed one and I had a baby. You That's see? what I wanted to see? ask! <laughs> so, <laughs> talking about that, talk about that, talk about motherhood. I know that you have an amazingly beautiful six-year-old. Tell me about how it felt when you, not how it felt, but like how you felt about being pregnant firstly and how old you were and the fact that you were pregnant. <laughs> what was that experience like? <laughs> what went through your mind? <laughs> it was actually quite a lot. I was 21. Mm. Um, broke virginity, fell pregnant. Hectic. Hey, That's why you must not kid boy. Don't, must not don't, kiss boys. Don't kiss the boy. Please don't do that. Don't kiss the don't, boy. Don't, uh, for my sake. Okay? First time and you fell pregnant. Yes. Um, That's wild. Yeah, it is wild. Yeah. Crazy because I actually knew about Spatly before I could find out yeah. I was pregnant. You know, the father of my child, uh, had bought me a teddy bear yeah and i named the teddy bear smartly i loved and cherished it so oh much my God. and I, funny thing i'm not a teddy bear girl like i, I don't like teddy bears like boring you know? <laughs> but that one, yeah, but i'm a flower girl not a teddy bear girl yeah. please. so <laughs> i i really love that teddy bear so much and i remember a week and a half later i and my boobs grew bigger yeah. i was like whoa something wrong and i already mm. knew i was pregnant i went to buy pregnancy tests mm. i test probably six times all of them positive uh three said negative really? and then three said positive i was like okay actually clear blue chill me come through I yeah. know this one out. <laughs> and i got I a clear blue it's like two weeks pregnant i was like okay oh my this is it 
Um, a part of me was really excited because really? I feel like a part of me already knew that there was something on the way. Yeah. Uh, first person I called was my sister. I said, XA, we have a baby. He's like, huh? Wait. I'm like, I'm, I'm pregnant. pregnant. She cried. Of course. Tears of joy, that is. Yeah. Uh, and I called my mom. Well, she told my mom. And I was also very okay with it. Like, mm. okay, Thando works. Thando is okay. She's stable. Mm. She, I know she, she's responsible. I'm actually mm. the most responsible at home, and I'm the last one. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Everyone is cha <chachara. laughs> <laughs> So my mom wasn't really worried about it. Um, mm. And yeah, and yeah, six years later, I'm a mother of a six-year-old, yeah. and it's actually quite amazing. It's definitely giving um, mm. Kylie Jenner vibes. Like, you're so stable. It doesn't matter the age, babes. It's, as long as you are financially stable, Mark, it's not an cool. age thing. Yeah, no, it really isn't an age thing. It really isn't an age thing. Mm. Um, I wouldn't advise anyone, though, to just go and fetch the baby, please. It's actually quite a lot of work. Everyone says that because you don't want all of us to be blessed like you because you know the, the you, cheat code. Let me tell you, you actually think we don't want you guys to have kids. Mm. It's quite a lot of work. You guys see the cutest... Yeah. little clips on social media and think oh my god yeah. also a busy mom a working mm. mom you know mm. you have to juggle all of these things and make sure that everything actually works yeah and it's, it's not easy it really isn't and mm. one thing that i have personally made a decision um <clears throat> excuse me uh worth was to be a present mother mm. at all costs you know i really just wanted to be there for my child from the beginning mm. till the end mm. and that's one thing that i've actually nailed and yeah. i'm really proud you should yeah, yeah. Uh, really but good. it's really challenging you know it's yeah. it's also emotionally draining sometimes you just really you don't want a child next to you mm. but she's yours forever and you can't take it <laughs> anywhere back you can't take it back to the mother you're the mother exactly, you know yeah. uh, but it's such a really precious gift yeah. i am so blessed and i'm so grateful uh, but it's a lot sometimes. Oh, yeah. but she's so adorable. I love that. Yeah. So talking about Spatley, she yes. commands about one million followers <laughs> on her Instagram page, <laughs> and she's got a Nickelodeon Kids Choice Award. Two boots. Yes, ma'am. So that whole dynamic of having kids on social media, how, what influenced your decision in having in that space, and how do you ration how much she's really exposed to if she isn't, if she if if she if if she exposed to even ish English, you know what I mean? Like, how is that whole dynamic? Because social media is so scary. It's so I have not see, like, now with, like, Cairo, like, everyone is just changing their dynamics with social media because they're still kids. And and when you walk, I recognize Spatley at Bounds, not Ashley Jr. (laughs) I was like, that's that's Spatley. And I'm sure a lot of people that are walking is like, hi, Spatley. And she's just like, who are you people? She, you know? Every single time we are in public, She's like, mom, how do they know me? Mm. Why do they know me? I don't want to be here, you know? Um, One thing, well, the actual reason why I had to like open a page for her, it was for, it was for business purposes. Yeah, we're trying to make money out of it, you know, and yeah. we actually did, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, we begged a very big bag, you know. Nice, congratulations. Um, thank you. <laughs> and we really just saw how people actually received her and mm. received our relationship on social media and like okay we'll continue uh, it's innocent it's 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 educational it's beautiful it's cute mm. and i'm glad now that actually smartly is able to communicate things that she would like to put out there okay, okay. and things that she would not like to put out there mm. so um it was really just like a business um <clears throat> strategy yeah and it actually worked but as we grow we we know as yeah. you mentioned that social media can be just a very dark That's place yeah. and we've had those moments where she got bullied really? uh, yeah she got bullied and i fetched him i fetched oh let's him. not even talk about the bully is bully? Anyway. don't bully yes, my yes. child yeah um yeah. But it's also those things that I know how to handle because I've been bullied before. Mm. Uh, you know, I've lived this life before. And mm. I think more than anything, I'm focusing on protecting her and make sure that she doesn't get to the space where I have been, yeah. you know. So it's kind of difficult because you can't control people and what they have to say. Mm. But the things that I can control, I can and yeah. I do them. 
Okay. Uh, so it's okay. Um, we are cool. You know we don't post a lot. Her. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We don't post a lot because she actually says we post like a lot of videos. Like, okay, please don't post this one. Why? Well, we also have reasons why. Yeah. And she'll give me valid reasons, and I have every right to respect what she wants out there. Yeah. She's a baby. She deserves mm. some privacy. Mm. You know, some cute baby moments yeah. you know, without having to share with the world. So it's manageable. Yeah. We're good. Okay, that's yeah. good. I love how business minded you are. The fact that you're talking about it's a business strategy and I know that you've opened a salon that's inspired yes, by your daughter. Yes. Tell me about the ideation of that and the thought process and why you actually decided to do that to begin with. Okay, so this is has, it a kiddie salon or is, can me well, I can come to my church? The mothers were just like, oh, we also want to like, okay, come. <laughs> okay. Uh, so like a mother and daughter thing, mother, oh, okay. mother and son, you know? Nice. Um so this is actually an idea of three years, you know. Yeah. I'm very much aware of what Spatley likes and what Spatley doesn't like and what she's interested in mm. and whatnot. So I realized that, number one, she loves books, she loves mm. reading, she's, yeah, she's quite a very inquisitive and curious little girl, little you know? Yeah. yeah, and she absolutely loved hair mm. as well. And she said it actually, it was her idea, yeah. to, just to put it out there. Really? Yeah, she said it as a something passing, you know, it's like, mom, we must actually open a salon. I was like, you're putting this child. Yeah. <laughs> She's an entrepreneur. Mine, a year later, she constantly yeah, I said, it. Said, said it. And there was a time where actually, yeah, she loved dollies and I would buy like a lot of dolls and she played with one doll with big hair. She really oh. loved, enjoyed doing that one's hair. I was like, do you really like Is it like baby like tando? It is baby tando! It's baby tando! <laughs> baby tando. <laughs> a black dolly oh. with big hair. Yeah. She absolutely loved Baby Tando. Okay. And I'm like, you really love Dolly? It's like, yeah, and I love this one because mm. it has big hair. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm. And three years later, she said it again. I'm like, okay, actually, I think this is time. Yeah. And let's invest, number one, because number one, we know how unstable this industry is. Mm. You know, six months later, you're not working. The other week, you're working. You, you know, it's just unstable. So it's like, yeah. okay, let's actually find something very solid for our lives and for your future. Yeah. Uh, let's create some generational wealth for mm. you. Um, and I did exactly that. You know, I... And you're doing me, I'm just a mother who <laughs> listens to what the child wants and I implement. And you enable. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's good. I love that for you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time to come sit I with me. I will see a hamba. Yeah, it's the end. Wait, sit down. I'm not done. Relax. Okay. Like, I never said that. <laughs> I have one last question. I just want to know about your future endeavors. What are you planning to do? What are the next business moves that you can tell? Hello, Bragal. Okay. Um, mm. I'm currently, well, I'm officially a director. I direct music yes. videos. A lot of music videos. Music videos! videos! Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like. Okay, Thanks, cool. Uh -huh. um, actually, I'm from directing a music video now. Okay. And I came straight here. And uh, I would love to work with you. That would be so cool. That would be the. That would be so cool because I actually haven't worked with a female director until recently in my whole career. Like I've never. For I worked real? with Sutra on my recent one. So I'd Let love to say. work with like female directors. Okay, now you know okay. to find me. You know where to find me. I got you. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've started doing that. I'm focusing mm -hmm. more into my acting career. Yes. You know, I've been a, a, an actress for how many years? Mm. <laughs> for eleven years now, yes. and only two, one, two years, two years ago. Uh, okay, prior. maybe two years. Maybe, maybe this year. Yeah. Actually, I felt like I am an actress. Okay. Because um, at that time, the opportunity came for acting. I really wasn't ready. Mm. Mentally, I wasn't ready for it. So mm. I just did it because the opportunity presented it itself. And I just did what I thought was right. But now I'm falling in love more with acting. So I mm. want to focus more on my acting career. Okay. Uh, get rid of the hosting. I'm really tired. I'm old. The clubs, no? Yes. I I'm get ready. you. I'm, I'm exhausted. Mm. There isn't like a single part of me that actually wants to go to the club. I hear you. Yeah. So I'm trying to minimize that but also yeah. trying to get something that will replace that yeah. um, and I'm discovering quite a number of things about me I love yeah I love so many things I also love like my boyfriend yeah. so you do have a boyfriend I asked you now and you mise me I um, said are you dating like thank you to my man thank you thank you to my man is that your vibe right now yeah he's here with me he's here yeah well outside he's really ah! I'm following you outside <laughs> just like just like oh, <laughs> No, we're not talking about my men, about my career. Damn! Uh, yes. Uh, um, I got a nugget though, as small <laughs> as it was. <laughs> yeah, so acting, directing, um, being a mom is a full-time job. So I'm trying to also better myself as a mom. Mm. 
uh, what else? Opening more businesses and obviously focusing on this particular one because yeah. it's like my first big one mm -hmm. and I really trying to invest every single little energy that I have in it and make sure that is the best. Then I'm able to obviously yeah. open other ones and they run smoothly. So, Yay! Yeah. Can I go and tell me who you're in? Oh no, it's somebody that you guys don't know. Oh, how long yeah. has it been though? <sighs> Some time. Anyway, I said don't kiss boys though. Yeah, I don't kiss him, Shem. <laughs> I actually don't, Shem. I oh. just love him. But no kissing. No kissing. Yeah, we're not trying to have a Smashley 2.0. Hey, Shem, that's on me very fertile, hey? Yeah, I actually want, hey. You, I think you should have another one. That one should be kids. too big. I want three kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see, actually, how, how it goes. Because she's six. She mustn't get to, like, ten. Like, there must be a small she's gap. She's been asking for another one, just yeah. by the way. It's like, mommy, sibling. I'm like, whoa, let me get you a dog first. Let's see how that is yeah, going to Yeah, I should get a dog That first. is actually different. A dog yeah. is a dog. Shame. Sorry. I know you love for, You <laughs> have so much love for dogs. Uh, yeah. like but it's different with babies. Uh, no. We'll see. We'll see. When the time is right, the Lord will, shall make it happen. I hear you. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on my show. Thank you for having I me. I want to give you a little nugget, guys. So every time I achieve anything or anything happens, Ntando is the first person to send me a bouquet of flowers. Aww. She's so amazing. She's so sweet. She's so thoughtful. And I heard your favorite flowers are either red or white roses. So I wanted to give you a gift. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry. You're going to make me cry. Thank you. I was going to say thank you for always being so thoughtful. You don't have to send me stuff, but you do. And I really do appreciate it. But please don't make me cry. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I hate to cry. I know. That's so <laughs> I can see, but I love it. And I love you. And I appreciate you. And you showed me your heart during the toughest time in my life. And I just want to say thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And that's it. <laughs> I'm going to make a police tissue. Don't cry. <laughs> Thank Don't you. Don't cry. Thank you. <laughs> you should have done that oh, off I'm camera. Uh, no. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank I you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it too. <laughs> You're such a pretty crier. <laughs> At least it's not like a Kim Kardashian meme. Like, she's a pretty crier. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that is the end of our second episode. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, get on some tissue. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you so much, babe. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> you didn't have to do this. I did. Oh. You don't have to do it every time you send it to me. I know, but I'm not expecting you to do it. Again. No, but I, I want to do it because you don't know how that would put a smile on my face, especially like when it's tough, you know. So I really, you have no idea. <sighs> Sometimes I'm like, how did she know? Like, when did I, it got here so fast? Like, this thing just happened yesterday. I know. Like, you were so cool. I even thought you owned a, 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 like a, a flower shop. I was like, does she own a flower? Because the way the flowers come, babe. With a handwritten note, you're so thoughtful. You have no idea. And there's isn't a lot of good people out there, but the ones that are... Stop it. Uh-uh. I'm not... I don't, this is enough. I'm this is okay. Here, so please, don't say this. You're going away? On a day. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. You're so cute. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.